However, one thing for sure we know. The New Testament had a very, very exalted view of who Jesus was. And either the New Testament does believe that he is God, or it gets close enough so that 99.9% .9 of Christians for the past 2,000 years, based upon the New Testament, insist that Jesus was God. Let's look at a few passages. The Gospel of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. Many Christians say that what you see from this is that the Word of God dwelling among us, taking on flesh, is Jesus who became incarnate, God incarnate. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 17. He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God. For by him all things were created. I mean, that is big. That through Jesus the whole world was created? Ain't kleine kite we'd say in Yiddish. That's not something small. He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on the earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. That's pretty elevated. Colossians chapter 2, For in him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. It sounds pretty much like it's saying that Jesus is God who's walking on the earth. In Titus chapter 2, verse 13, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus the Messiah. Finally, 1 Timothy 3, 16, and by common confession, great is the mystery of godliness, he who was revealed in the flesh. Basically, what they're saying in the Christian Bible and certainly Christianity is that Jesus was God. I don't know, by the way, if Christianity would have two billion followers today if Jesus was a short, fat, bald Jewish man. I'm not sure it would sell so well. But a little bit of a makeover can help. So what do they imagine? You see, it's interesting. In the Bible, God creates us in his image. In idolatry, we make God in our image. We try and imagine, what would God look like if I could make a God? He would be really good looking. So that's what happens. Isaiah says, you cannot compare me to anything. Don't think you're going to be able to think of me and think of something else and have an idea of what I am. Isaiah says, to what can you liken God? And what likeness can you attribute to him? He says, I am Hashem, that is my name. I shall not give my glory to another, nor my praise to graven idols. Page 7. Isaiah 45, I am Hashem, there is no other. Other than me, there is no God. Know that there is nothing beside me. I am Hashem, there is no other. In Hosea chapter 11, for I am God and not a man. Okay, first we'll take a look at uh, Philippians chapter 2. And this is a, a Paul teaching. Um, starting in verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Jesus Christ, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient, obedient to God, unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow 
of the things in the heaven and the things in the earth and the things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So this is uh, an important thing to understand from going forward from here is the three states of Jesus because when the scriptures talk about Jesus you have to think about was it before he was born or was it during the time he walked the earth or was it after he ascended to heaven again so because he was in the form of God but without body without human form without the body of a man then he was born as a man and as a man so his mother was the mankind the flesh and his father was the Spirit of God so that's why he had the full bodily Spirit of God in the man so being found as a man the Spirit of God made himself he made his flesh the man obedient to God and obedient even until the cross and then after death God raised him up and glorified him into God again um, so this is not another God but it's a part of God so uh, let's take a closer look at some scriptures here okay we know that God made man in his image or in our image male and female he made them okay so there's a man is in the image of God there's gonna be a whole discussion on that but that is a fact now Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day God was walking in the garden in the cool of the day so how was he walking did he look like a man he, he Adam and Eve were made in God's image so that's a curious curiosity there now if we go to Genesis chapter 18 starting in verse 1 and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day this is Abraham and he lifted up his eyes and looked and lo three men stood by him and when he saw them he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself towards the ground. And he said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort you your hearts for after you shall pass on for therefore you are come to your servant and they said they said so do as thou hast said so this is three men and Abraham said my Lord and they answered him okay and Abraham hastened to the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran to the herd and fetched a calf, tender and good, and gave it the, unto a young man, and he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he dressed, and he set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. Okay? This is God visiting Abraham. Okay. 
And they said to him, they said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, this is one of the three, and he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah will have a son. And then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid. And he said, No, but you did laugh. Okay, so, And the men rose up from there and looked towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, and do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is grievous, I will know I will now I will now go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it. And the men turned their faces from there and went towards Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. The men, the three men, went towards Sodom, and Abraham stood before the Lord. I don't. Or did two of them go before Sodom, and Abraham stood before the Lord? And Abraham drew near and said, "So Abraham is drawing near towards the Lord. Will you also destroy uh, fifty righteous?" In, most people know this story. So Abraham's talking to God. And God also went to look to see Sodom, okay? And see, and Abraham says in verse 31, Behold, I have taken upon me to speak to the Lord. Preadventure there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, Oh, not let the Lord be angry. And I will speak yet but this once. So he keeps saying, he keeps calling him the Lord, and he's standing there talking to him, and he just had him, fed him. Okay. And then chapter 19. There came two angels to Sodom at evening. Okay, so maybe that's the other two. Is the angels and the Lord is one of the three men? Is that is that what it means? Okay. And uh, then, and you look if you look at uh, Genesis nineteen twenty four regarding Sodom and Gomorrah, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. So is the Lord in two places at one time? The Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Now here's another interesting part. Genesis chapter 32. Starting verse 24. And Jacob was left alone, and there 
wrestled with a man with him until the breaking of the day. So Jacob stayed in the dark and he wrestled with a man until daybreak. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. And he said, I will not let you go except you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Your name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince... You have power with God and with men and have prevailed. And, ja and Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Why is it that you ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And then Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, because I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. So Jacob is saying, I wrestled with God. And the Bible says it was a man. So it was God in the form of a man. And God in the form of a man that visited Abraham. Okay? So it's not um, so black and white about uh, what God exactly is or can be. Um, is anything too hard for God? So now we can say, okay, well, how can Jesus be God on the earth uh, praying to God in heaven, his Father? And how can Jesus call God his Father? Well, first of all, when Jesus was on the earth, he was a man's body, the flesh, filled with the Spirit of God. So his fa his his wa his uh, the fatherhood of him was from God, and his mother provided the the humanity of him. So this is God in the flesh. So, you know, it, 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 it is a miracle, but uh, is anything too hard for God? Who's to say, why wouldn't God be able to do this? Um, he did all those other things. So it's not that big of a stretch to say that he did this also. So, um, now Jesus, um, there's a lot of things that Jesus spoke about uh, where he said he, he continually pointed towards his father in heaven as God and he prayed to his father in heaven but he also referred to himself as the son of God but he also said that we are all sons of God so one of his disciples said show us the father and we will believe you and he said have I been with you so long that you don't know who I am? So this is, it's a, it's, the apostles refer to it as the mystery of God. I mean, how are we supposed to understand how, how he can do this? The fact is he does. It. And it's the same God because he said he was going to do it and he did it. And he's capable of doing it. And Jesus didn't come along and say to make some other God. Jesus always taught everyone to serve his father, the God of the Tanakh, the God of the Torah. But he also spoke very plainly as himself coming from God and to teach this and to fulfill the law. So it's not a new God, it's the same God. Now you can't go by what other Christians have done with this information since then. And 
you know, there, there's a lot of different kinds of Christians, and some of them have a lot of different ideas. That that doesn't count. We all that counts is what did Jesus teach, and what did the apostles teach, and what does the Tanakh teach. That's all that counts. So don't even listen to me. Listen to what the the Tanakh and the apostles say. I'm just trying to show you what they say. Okay. So now, you know, can God do this? Well, I think he can. It's like if you think of, um, say, if eternity, say, uh, let's just make a little example, okay? Here's a piece of paper, okay? So if this page here represents eternity, that is beyond everything that is created, okay? So God exists in eternity, or He is eternity. I don't know. It's, it, you know, that's beyond me. But now we say draw a circle on the paper and say, okay, now in eternity, the circle represents all that is created, as far as we can understand creation. All the stars, the sun, the moon, the planets, the galaxies, the earth, everything is in this circle. So eternity goes beyond what is created. And God also goes beyond what is created. But he is also in what is created. So all things are in him. He is in all things. Okay? Now, if we put the earth... Um, now, if we have a man, okay, now a man has a flesh, a body, mind, and spirit, okay? So you have your flesh, you have your mind, which is a physical thing, and it's the, the electrical workings of the mind, chemical reactions that provide our, our self with this place to reside, and our body to to provide mobility in this world and there's also a spirit there's a, there's something beyond the body and mind i think the bible would call it the heart um, the, that is the life of the man that is from god that doesn't come from the earth it comes from god and when you die it goes back to god that's clearly taught in the bible so that part is uh, everybody has this spirit of life within them. So now Jesus had that in a greater amount, in the fullness. He had, he had it all. So he was the perfect example of what a man should be. But for some reason, we are not there. We, we are not attaining this. Now, we, we have a piece of it, but not the fullness of it. So, that's what Jesus is, to explain in the Bible. He is the fullness of the Spirit of God in the human flesh. Doesn't mean, God, that all of eternity is in, within this man. God is everywhere. And God is in you, and he's in me, and he's in Jesus. But he's in Jesus in a different way than in you and me. Because in Jesus, he's like the guy that was walking in the garden. He's like the guy that had dinner with Abraham. The guy that wrestled with Jacob. He's that guy. Which is God, but God is still in heaven. Because God is everywhere. So... It's not a different God, it's the same God, but a different understanding to think about God. Um, we have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the father, the son, and the man transformed by the Spirit of God, Jacob. And he becomes a new man named Israel. 